Minnie Mart rushed into the hospital unit and found the doctor and receptionist by his parents' bed. The doctor broke the news that his mother had passed away at 3 p.m. Minnie Mart was devastated, unable to comprehend that his mother was gone. He collapsed, clutching her hand, asking if she had suffered. The doctor assured him she passed peacefully. Minnie Mart lashed out when the doctor insinuated he didn't care calling him a fake and denying his mother's death. As they arranged for the mortician, Minnie Mart locked himself in with his parents, refusing to accept her passing. He checked his father's pulse, relieved he was still alive, and apologized for leaving them alone. The doctors banged on the door, but Minnie Mart yelled at them to shut up, overwhelmed by the loud noise. He touched his mother's lifeless face. Despite his disbelief at losing her after just two days of treatment, tears helplessly streamed down his face. Eventually, the ward staff forced the door open, finding Minnie Mart curled up beside his parents. Unit 110 gave him with two options either leave his mother's body to be found by the authorities for a funeral, or opt for a discreet cremation, which came with complications and expenses. Overwhelmed and unprepared, Minnie Mart felt utterly lost, never taught how to handle such matters. He pleaded his father for guidance. Did his father even grasp the reality of his wife's death? Or was he resigned to his own fate? The doctor had to give medication to the other patients, and Minnie Mart insisted on giving some to his mom, too. He promised to gather all the money they needed, just begging them not to tell him she had passed away. Frantically, he searched the Mart for money, but he barely had any. Quan had surely given him a lot, but what if he was just imagining Quan? His journal slipped from his grasp, and he desperately reassured himself that Quan was real. He just needed more money. His mother's voice rang in his head. Always lock the door, because everyone was a potential thief, except family. Staggering home, he searched their unit for valuables. Relief washed over him as he discovered more cash in the refrigerator. He was determined to revive her with more medicine. Quan was talking with his brothers on the phone when he arrived at the store, which was locked. He was reminded to wrap things up at Red Mansion before handing it over to Mr. Kim. But Quan noticed that Minnie Mart was missing, pushing him towards the hospital. He found Minnie Mart arguing with the doctor. The doctor informed Quan that his mom had passed away, which left Minnie Mart losing his mind. Minnie Mart urged Quan to demand a refund, accusing the doctor of being a fraud and leeching off his money. Seeing Minnie Mart in such disarray brought back memories of Quan's own childhood by his late mother's bedside. He let out a sigh and shook Minnie Mart to snap him out of it. Despite feeling perplexed about helping someone he considered pathetic and worthless, Quan decided to arrange for his mother's cremation within two days, regardless of Minnie Mart's mental state, and offered to cover the costs. He couldn't quite comprehend why he was going to such lengths for someone he viewed so useless, but perhaps he saw a reflection of himself in Minnie Mart. 